Joining us right now is uh, Harry Dent. He's on the telephone, editor of Economy and Markets Newsletter and Zero Hour author, along with Wealth Consulting Group CEO Jimmy Lee. Good to see you, uh, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Harry, let me kick this off. Give us your assessment of what took place this week and how you want to be positioned. Well, you know, we, we were in a top of a channel since early 2016. We've been saying this is the final rally in the greatest bubble in history, and Trump has basically given this a big boost when he got elected and the tax stuff. But we are at the top. This is a possible major top. But we have just hit the bottom of that channel yesterday on all indices. So we're still in the zone that says we're still going in the same direction, but a break much lower would be dangerous. We are, we were expecting a, a bounce today off the bottom of this channel. So you're saying, so just, just tell us what you, you're thinking then. You're saying this is the top. In other words, you're expecting a big sell-off from here? Well, we were expecting a, a correction that the key rule for our people is we're saying, look, if this can be contained to 10 to 15 percent, which it has so far, then we're still in the same direction. If it breaks much lower than this, then it starts to get be a sign that this could have been a top. And, of course, the farther right, it goes down, the more It's a technical that. look at things. Jimmy Lee, are you on the other side of that trade? Well, I, I am a little bit bullish, and uh, I think I think that we're going to see a buying opportunity here. And it's actually great to be on your show and with Harry this morning. But uh, I think we're going to see a buying opportunity. The U.S. economy is very strong. I think we've sold off a, a little too quickly, and uh, I think the market's going to go up from here. Hey, guys, it's Mike Murphy. You know, I think a lot of in investors or for people at home watching, are, they're overthinking this pullback. We've had a pullback from historic highs. And when you get that type of a pullback, if you still have an underlying strong economy and strong corporate earnings coming in, you look for quality names and you buy them. So uh, I, I just think r rather than overcomplicating it with different levels, if you have a quality name like, like an Amazon or like an Apple, something you've been watching go up and hitting new high after new high, if you get a 10 or 15 percent pullback, I think for people at home watching, it's a great time to allocate some money there. Harry, you agree with that? I, I do. We're saying as long as it's contained to here, it's if it goes much lower that it gets dangerous. I, I am not, as everybody knows, bullish long term. I think our workforce growth has, has peaked and is moving sideways. Productivity has dropped from 3% to a half a percent. Well, it's not that you're not just bullish, you're boomers. very bearish. It's not that you're not bullish, you're bearish, right? I, I am very bearish, but but we're bullish as long as the trend stays. I mean, this trend has what been trend? going for We just for had years two days now. of declines, and now we have a gain. I don't understand what trend you're talking about. This is the greatest bubble in history, if nobody's ever noticed. It, and... and the markets have been straight up in an exponential trend for the last three years, and we say this is coming to an end, but it doesn't come to an end until we violate. I agree I with the okay. other two people here. We have not violated the trend yet. It's going to take a violation, but we are very, we, we are very close. We Got hit it. right where it should bounce yesterday. H Harry, what would bring this bubble like we've never seen before that you're talking about? <laughs> Well, well, first of all, you know, the smart money, the smart money index, which is a great indicator most people don't look at, the people who buy late and, 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 and buy correctly, they have not bought this rally since February this year. Now, they bought the last one, uh, but they are not confirming this rally. We're getting non-confirmations. You know, foreign markets, emerging markets in China are down 26, 30 percent. That's not a good sign. That's a big divergence. The small caps, for the first time in this rally, are not are underperforming. So there are some signs that this thing may be topping. Again, so, I'm so just Jimmy Lee, for respond to if that. It doesn't follow through. Jimmy Lee, I'm still with the trend. What, what do you think, Jimmy Lee? Respond to this, given you're you're so bullish. Well, I think your guest on set was spot on. I mean, some of these names that have been hit the most, I mean, if you look at the year-to-date returns, even though they've been down over 10 percent over two days, uh, they're still up a lot. And I, I do believe in tech, diversification is very important. And, and I do believe that right now buying quality is, is a really good idea. So um, if you stick to the kind of the fundamentals of, of what most you know, investment professionals like to tell their clients, I think right now is a good time to get in the market. We've got some clients with uh, cash on the sidelines that we've been holding on uh, for a pullback, and, and we're definitely going to use this as a way to, to, to get some of that money to work. What's quality to you? Well, I mean, you look at certain sectors that, that I think are, are still good. We added to biotech and healthcare in general. If we are in the late uh, stages of a business cycle, mm -hmm. healthcare works pretty well. We're still bullish on, on industrials. We think that the 
tensions of trade wars with China will ease over time, and 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 maybe maybe as we go into those midterm elections, and I think the industrials uh, will work out as well. So. You know, buy quality names, companies that have pricing power, companies that might even pay dividends. I mean, value's been out of uh, play for a while. Uh, think about good value stocks. And you're not worried about higher rates? Well, I am, but right. relatively speaking, Maria, I mean, rates are still low. Right. I mean, uh, if you think about it, I mean, people are, 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 are in this kind of a, a mindset that uh, we can be in a, a low interest rate environment forever, uh, but that's not, that's not reality. So as we get to normality, that's a good thing. And pullbacks mm. like this for the stock market, as we all know, are healthy. So investors do not need to panic on this one. And as I say, you know, a good correction is, 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 is something you don't want to waste. Yeah, but what, what, the point that Dagan has made this week is this, the, the speed with which we got to 3.2 percent. Or, or whatever it was. Well, it, it caught people off guard. And, and yeah. they're, they're rightfully nervous about it. And you've seen a decline in interest rate sensitive sectors this year in the home builders. Home, uh, housing sales, existing yeah. home sales have been down six months in a row. And in the auto sector. Yeah, things so, that usually lead the market. Right. Okay. And the industrial phase is home building and autos. Yeah. And that's what's really led the market the last decade. But sure. I think it's a different world now because people aren't going out and buying cars like they used to because of startups like Uber and uh, ride yeah. sharing and things like that. So I think it's a l tough to base it on previous indicators. Good debate, hey, guys. Real, real Harry, quick, Dan, Maria. Jimmy Lee, great to see you both. Uh, okay. Very quick. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, gentlemen.